Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. I want to start out with an oil chart. We had a fairly well organized oil smackdown came out of Goldman and the government this morning. So they took oil down from about 113 to 105, so about an eight dollar drop typical deflation scare I don't think there's anything behind it I think they may be setting a stage for Obama's speech tomorrow or just Goldman front running the government and making some money so don't make much of that if we take a look at silver it didn't have a big impact on silver let's get to the two hour so we can look at a few things here we've got a fairly long term trend line here that's projecting 38, 39 going forward maybe. We've got a tighter trend line that we still haven't reached. And then we've got our breakout resistance and then support line right here. So you can see the MACD is rolling over nicely. It's Well, it's projecting a rollover. You can see right here is a little blip up and then continues down. So sometimes, here's another one right here projected to break through but it didn't so we're rolling towards the zero line for a possible breakup tonight's probably going to be an indicator of where we're going on this they're either going to have to hit it really hard tonight or tomorrow morning or it's going to cross over and we're going to be on the, on another up move continuation of this trend so as I pointed out yesterday this action here is really not significant you can see on a price basis it hasn't corrected as much as this correction did this is because this is not a logarithmic chart this is just a real price chart so it doesn't it doesn't go in percentages this these price moves in dollars are actually less than these moves so it's a very small move to get a very good reset of the MACD we've got a low that rivals one low we have here two lows and we're coming close to about this low so pretty good reset on the MACD unless we have a violent move to the downside tonight we probably are going to reset and move higher so we're gonna watch it tonight I want to address some questions a number of you have posed some questions especially about yesterday's topic so I just wanted to talk about a few of these questions Thank you. Is there a way to find out who the trader is? Also, even if the trader bought 100k options and the price of silver does not go below $25, can they still profit from the option premium, right? Hasn't the trader already doubled their money and sell them? Does buying the option affect the price of the asset? Is it the cause for the $2 drop? So, a number of questions there. First off, we don't know who this trader is. I don't think that they are required to disclose that information. You can see that we've got 106,000 now on the open interest for that option. So I was correct yesterday. It doesn't show the outstanding open interest until the next day. So you can see we had 6,000 traded here. That could be 3,000 long and 3,000 short, and we stay at 106. That could have been 6,800 liquidating. We'll be down 100 tomorrow. Or that could be 6,000 new positions. We'd be at 112. So you can't say for sure. We just know there was a volume of 6,800. That comes nowhere near close to liquidating this gigantic outlying open interest on this. So we'll be watching this one. To the next question, they got in about 8 or 9 cents. So yes, they doubled their money. And it did go up a little bit today but unless this downside price move continues if we even get back up to here expect that if I think if we even show any tendency to rally from this point you can expect those prices to evaporate on these options and I think the lifetime well they're not going to give it to us it's not available but the daily low was 14 cents I think if we rally you'll see this go below 10 cents and probably right back to 8 cents fairly fast because the bet that we get to $25 by next 
July, that's that's a big bet. And that's a big outlier bet. That's a bet on an extreme move. Now the next part of the question was does buying the option affect the price of this asset? Is it the cause for the two dollar drop? So that's a pretty complex question. You need to understand that the way options work as I explained when someone buys this option, let's get back to the chart. When someone buys any of these options, there is a corresponding option on the other side, that it, a corresponding position on the other side. So for example, if I buy a put, I'm long one put, so I buy the 25 July put. I'm betting the price will go below 25. Someone else had to sell that to me. So my gain is their loss. So it's normal to see, and typically these are floor traders that take the other side of these because they're the ones that create liquidity. So when this position was initiated, say 100,000 of these were purchased, someone took the other side. Now, what they normally do when they do that is they, they have to offlay the risk. So if they sold 100,000 puts, then they may offlay that in another, they may buy puts in another contract to try to offlay that risk, or they may go to the underlying. And the underlying in this case is the SLV. So they may have sold those puts and then shorted the SLV to to offset that risk. So yes, the answer is yes, it can be, it, it can have an effect on the price of the underlying asset. Is it the cause for the $2 drop? I don't know. I wouldn't think that a $100,000, a 100,000 contract position in the SLV could cause a $2 drop in silver, but I, I can't answer that question. I don't know for sure. But yes, it is offset through other markets. They don't just stand there naked and risk losing a tremendous amount of money. They offset it in different markets. And so, same question, can the amount of calls or puts placed sway the price one way or the other? Same, same answer, generally no, but when you have an extreme position taken by someone, then they may have to not just offset in the option market, they may actually have to go to the underlying and offset that. In that case, yes, it can cause a move in the underlying. But remember, the underlying is the SLV. Now, how does that feed back into the COMEX? So you got somebody taking a position in the options, it feeds back into the SLV, potentially that feeds back into the COMEX, and potentially that feeds back into physical silver. So there's, there's a complex chain there, and it's hard to say what the connection is. Some insiders may know. I don't know the answer to that. I just, I just believe that, that there's some relationship, but I can't say for sure. Next question, these contracts are for physical delivery. Have to sell before expiry? Well, these are contracts for delivery of the SLV. In other words, if these contracts expire before, or if these, these contracts are in the money and they hit the expiration date, then they can be exercised. So, for example, if this guy holding these puts, if, for example, on the expiration date of July, let's say the price is $23, that gives this guy the right to sell 100,000 contracts, which is a million shares, or 10 million shares of SLV, because 100 per contract, at 25. If the price is 23, then he locks in a $2 profit because he can sell them for 25 and go right back and buy them in the market for 23. So yes, if they go to expiry, then they can take delivery. But again, what they're taking delivery of is paper shares of the SLV. 
Next to the MACD, could you please elaborate on ex how exactly you're tweaking the MACD setting so that it looks like that in the bottom graph? I think they may have been referring to the lines, so I want to show you how I do these lines. It's real, really pretty easy. You just go to lines, add lines, and freehand. Gives you a little pointer here and it allows you to draw whatever lines you want. Now it also allows you to draw lines down here in the MACD. So if I want to draw a trend line for the MACD, I can put it here and try to show relative lows in the MACD. Or if I want to do a falling trend line in the MACD, I can just draw it like that. And that shows the breakout and failure that we had recently. So this is just the Mac, just a simple chart with the MACD and then with the uh, drawing of the freehand lines on. Now, I want to segue into another question that relates to the MACD, and this is a little bit more complicated question. The question is about time frames in the MACD, and what is their validity, and how do you determine that? So, let's go to the closest time frame that we have. Let's go to the tick chart. You can see we have a MACD that's going here. This is hours that we're looking at. And you can see we reset, we're, we had a oversold. I found that when you're on the tick chart, the MACD really doesn't tell you too much. If we go out to the minute chart, you can see we've got some violent signals that occurred back here. And so now we're stabilizing sort of at the zero line. This MACD seems to be rolling over to the upside like we're going to rally. But again, not a lot of signals out of this one. It's too close of a time frame. We back out to five minutes. You can see we're rolling over to the downside on the five minute. So the five minute is saying that we're overbought and we're, well, not by a lot. We're just above the zero line, but we're rolling over anyway. So what I wanted to point out is, for example, let's look at the one hour chart that we were looking at before. Now the one hour chart was predicting a rally at this point at the breakthrough. The break, uh, the breakthrough of the positive line here on the MACD, but you can see we went, we didn't reach the zero line and we failed. Now this is starting to roll over again to the upside. We're getting a little rally here, but if we pull out one more step to the two hour, what has got two crosses now? You see a cross there and a cross there, two bullish crosses. If you go to the two hour, it hasn't crossed yet. And if you back out one more to the four hour, we're actually still falling, not even to the zero line. And we'll go out to the eight hour, just coming down from an extremely overbought position to the daily. We're just touching a top like the last one we had and all the way out to the weekly. You can see we hit a top fell and then exploded out to new highs and all the way out to the monthly you're not going to see any crosses you're just going to see straight up so what does that mean how do you how do you analyze that well the stronger a market we're, we're just doing bull macd's here we're not talking about bear markets we're just looking at a bull market macd indicators the stronger the market the shorter the time frame crossovers are valid so as you can see, the market is weakening now. We're on the 10 minute chart, and you can see just this cross right here on the 10 minute was very bullish. And we got a big rally, and then we got strong, and then we broke out again from the zero line, and we went way high, nice big run. Now, as we're rolling over here at this top, it's getting weaker and weaker. So, we'll pull out one more to the 15 minutes and again we had a big rally and then we crossed down we were going to cross over but we didn't we failed again and we crossed and we would expect this to be a big rally right here even going to new highs but we didn't we actually completely went 
almost to overbought territory and we failed again. So this pattern we're seeing on the short term is building a flag formation. But the MACD is transitioning. This is the type of thing you see when you transition from a bull to a bear market. Remember I said that in a bull market the MACD buy signals are valid and in a bear market the MACD sell signals are valid. So this is a valid buy. So is this. So is this. But wait, we get a sell here. And then we fall really hard. We rally and get a buy. But we don't go anywhere. Go a little bit up and then we get another sell. And now we're at about a wash. So the market is trying to determine whether it is going to roll over to a negative condition or it's going to continue on in a bull move. I think the most valid one to look at right now is the two hour and we want to watch this MACD to see where it crosses over. So it's all relative. You can't say well we're going up because the one hour MACD says we are. Well if the down move is strong it will, it will overpower that one hour and you'll have to look at the two hour. And if the move is really strong to the downside, it's going to overpower that two hour. You've got to wait for the four hour to reset and on and on and on. So that's the best explanation I can give to you of the relative power, predictive power of the MACD. It's all based on the time frame and how strong the market is if you're in a bull or bear. So next question. Hello, Brother John. Could you... Give your opinion on the dip that silver takes when the stock market in general drops. Now, that's another tough one. We can do some comparative analysis just by crossing these charts. If you go to more instruments, you can find indices. And under the US, you can find the Dow 30 index. And if you double click it, you'll get an option to overlay. So you just choose to overlay. This is going to take silver and it's going to cross it over the Dow. So this is your beta, as they say, the relative, how much they are related to each other. Those are rated in 60, 50, anywhere from 0 to 100%. 0 means they always move in an opposite direction. 100% moves they, uh, means they always move in the exact same direction. At just a rough guesstimate, this beta is probably about 70 you can see here that at this one point silver was falling but the Dow was rising so there's a divergence if you want to go way out to the monthly you can see that the rally in silver started in the fall of 2008 this is, was a big buy point I bought here a lot of people bought here bought a lot of silver as much as you could back the truck up, load the boat, whatever you could do. Now the Dow itself didn't start rallying until March, so you did have a divergence. The Dow continued to fall while silver started to rally. Now once the Dow started to rally, silver caught up and surpassed it. So this is your Dow-silver ratio, which ultimately I expect to go one to one, but there is definitely some correlation between these markets would be expected if you're looking at these markets as an inflation play. Anything that has a price, if they're printing a whole bunch of money, except for real estate, of course, but the idea is if they're printing money like crazy, then things that have a price will go up together. So there seems to be a fairly strong correlation with silver and the Dow. We'll go to the daily. You can see that we, in March or so, silver pretty much overtook the Dow on this chart and the Dow seems to be rolling over silver is continuing higher so there is some correlation they're just general deflation inflation scenarios and if the powers that be decide to do a gigantic deflation scare such as what they did in 2008 and we'll show that on the weekly if they decide to crash everything then they're gonna take everything down and they did Nevertheless, silver, even though it took a, a big hit, 
ultimately recovered, and those of you who followed the physical know that the physical price never even fell. So, pretty hard topic. Takes a lot of study to understand it. Can you comment on holding physical silver in an IRA? Well, IRA is a little bit different than a 401k. Your 401k is very limited because your company decides what type of plan you're allowed to invest in. Mostly it's mutual funds. An IRA is a lot more, you have a lot more control. It's the same principle that the profits accumulate without taxes. You get to put pre-tax money in. You, want to, you don't pay taxes until you take it out. So IRAs and 401ks are very similar in that regard. But IRAs are much better in the sense that they're self-directed. Now, you can hold physical silver in an IRA. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you can hold American Eagles, American Silver Eagles, and American Gold Eagles in an IRA. Now, again, what's the drawback? Well, an IRA is just a piece of paper. And you can't control those funds yourself. You can't take delivery of those funds and buy the Silver Eagles and bury them in your backyard. They're not going to let you do that. You have to have a trustee who runs the IRA. Normally it's a bank or a brokerage firm or something like that. And guess what? If you're buying silver for the same reason I'm buying silver, then the very reason you're buying it is the reason that this trust that you don't trust could go broke. So... Yes, it's better than a 401k, but no, it's nothing like holding physical silver. Now, there are some plans, and I don't know much about them because I'm not a tax attorney and I don't have any IRAs because I work for a Fortune 500 and I have a 401k, but I have heard of self-directed IRAs and companies that allow you to incorporate those funds in a non-profitable business or a charitable trust little complex tax schemes allow you to use the money that you've saved up to run a business and pay yourself and I, I don't really know how all that works you might want to investigate that but as far as my own personal involvement I say take a loan against if you have an IRA liquidate it and buy physical if you have a 401k borrow half of it buy physical I say buy physical I'm expect I'm more in the school of Bix Weir I expect the entire paper market of everything to collapse. I expect all bankrupt banks to be bankrupt, all governments to be bankrupt, and a complete reset of the system, either through hyperinflation or deflation. I think these IRAs will go with it. And not to mention the chance of government seizure of IRAs. If they seize the 401ks, they're going to seize the IRAs. So that's the best I have on that. And last... I know you prefer to hold numismatic silver. Could you explain why you would pay a higher premium for a coin as opposed to a smaller one for a bullion bar, one or ten ounce? Wouldn't a bar be easier to sell and the premium on it is smaller than the coin? Well, yes, in a sense, there are a lot of one ounce bars out there, but I don't know of a recognized one ounce bar. I don't know. I, I believe Johnson Mathian. Inglehard, who are the two big 100 ounce bar makers, I don't believe, well, maybe it's just Inglehard is not making bars anymore. Maybe Johnson Mathy is still making bars, but I'm way against investing in 100 ounce bars because you got to drill them or you got to use some test. They can be drilled and filled, they can be faked, they're easy to counterfeit. And I believe the price of silver is going to an astronomical number. And so when I buy silver, I'm thinking about a thousand, two thousand dollars an ounce. So, now, why would I invest in numismatic silver? Well, I initially did that for the short run in case I wanted to flip it and buy the cheap bars. But now that it's happened, I've decided I want to hold the numismatics. I like the coins. They're beautiful. And part of the deal for me is the inability of counterfeiters to counterfeit the incredible numismatic designs that you find on Perth or Canadian or American. So... I like coins. I don't like bars. I think that you want to go with the most easily recognizable form of silver, the most tradable, the least counterfeitable, and for that reason I prefer coins over bars. So that's just a personal preference. I suggest you do whatever you think is best, but that's just my opinion. So 
we're going to go back to the silver chart and we are on the two hour we're looking for a roll up to the zero line and a rally I think if we get to 41 we're just going to continue to 45 to 50 if we don't get there I think they're going to trash it down really hard don't know my last projection was 38 37 and 31 we'll see I, I missed on 40 it went a lot higher than I thought it would but that gave us room to correct back and we're still above 40 and everything's reset so the bull market is intact there's no reason to worry time to keep stacking and look for the next buy point and we'll talk to you next time